Hi and welcome to this video. In this one, we are going to talk about React's synthetic events. So hit that subscribe button and let's get started. Synthetic events in React uh, can often be a point of confusion for beginners. Unlike native browser events, React's synthetic events are a wrapper around the browser's native events. They ensure cross-browser compatibility and they optimize event handling. And in this video, we're going to break all of this down through different examples and we're going to see how you can uh, implement these events better in your projects. The first example here is a very, very simple example. In this one, we are just going to listen for a click event. And once the click happens, we are going to lock that synthetic event to the console. So, and as far as the project structure is concerned, it's exactly like the previous two videos in this series. Cool. Let me click on this that here it says button clicked. So if I bring this up, we can see it is a synthetic base event. What is the type of event? It's right here. It's a click event, All right? And the way we would uh, type annotate uh, the events in React using TypeScript would be we need to specifically determine what kind of event it is. So this event is a React.mouse event since we are clicking. So that's example number one. Let's jump into example number two. Now, in the example number two, what we want to do is basically we want to showcase how we are going to handle an input change event. And the react.change event, react.change event, this ensures that the correct type is used for the input event. The way I've implemented this is we have our use state, the current, uh, the initial value for the state variable is an empty string. The reason for that is because uh, whenever we load the page, we don't have anything written inside our input forms. So it is logical to leave it uh, as an empty string. But then using the handle change, we basically change or manipulate the value of the state variable, which is this value. And we assign it any value or anything that the user writes within this input. So if I were to write one, two, three, you're going to see we are going to have one, two, three. Or if I to write Halali, you're going to see that as well. And here is basically the JSX syntax for that. We have our div, we have an, we have an input element that has that is actually a controlled input and then we uh, target that value right here right so this is example number two this shows an input change event let's jump into example number three example number three this is handling form submit now we're not going to talk about any backend stuff the way we are going to handle form in this example is we are basically going to log whatever the user writes in the browser. So let me just refresh the page. So what do we have here? We have, again, our use state function, which is going to look for uh, state changes or data that is uh, needed to re-render our application, All right? And then we are actually using an interface. This is coming from TypeScript. Interfaces in TypeScript are used to type annotate objects. They are specifically to created to type annotate objects, all right? They can't do anything else. And in here we have just one property, which is name, but the value that the name accepts should be or must be of type string. And that's exactly what we initialize our state with. So the form data initially is going to be an empty um, string. And then what we do is we basically grab the name and we set it as the value, right? So here is the implementation. Uh, here we have our form uh, element. And then within the form, we have our input. And again, since we are controlling the value using this on change, method, this is technically a controlled form input. So what is this actually trying to do? So if I come right here and if I say react is awesome, 
and as soon as I hit save, we should be able that that text or the content is being submitted. So here we have an object that has a type of name, and then the uh, value for it is React is awesome, right? This is example number three. This basically showcases how, how we are going to target this form event input, right? We are basically talking about this as well as this change event, all right? So these two things are the main focus of this lesson, all right? And um, I, I think I forgot to actually mention this. So whenever we want to submit a form, we usually put that on the form element itself because HTML forms uh, by definition are um, a little bit accessible. What I mean by that is if I come right here, so I could have clicked on the submit or I could have said like Alpine. And then if I hit enter, it is going to submit that as well. So that's something that comes from forms. And that's why we put the submit on the form. And you can see on submit is actually another even listener that is given to us by React, right? So that's example number three. Let's jump into example number four. Example number four is basically uh, uh, talking about how we are going to target mouse events, like when mouse enters a specific area of the UI or when it leaves, what are the kind of events that we're going to uh, target, uh, use to target those specific um, actions by the user. So here, what we have is basically we have on mouse enter. And then since it is on mouse enter, we are going to say handle mouse enter. That's the usual convention. And then on mouse leave, we are going to basically target handle mouse leave. And what are these two doing? Now, keep in mind, we are changing the state of our application, right? So at any given state, the application is going to be different. So if I hover on this, it's going to say hovering. If I hover away, it's going to say not hovering. Now, since we are changing data dynamically, we need to have some sort of hook. And usually we use use state for this kind of stuff. Now, initially, use state is set to false. The reason for this is because initially the user is not hovering on it. And then we set this false as the value for the state variable. All right, so, so far the state variable is false, but as soon as I hover on this, this set hovering, this function is going to set the value as true right here. So we say when we are hovering on it, set the value of hovering to true. And whenever we set that to true, what do we do? We basically, let me just fix this. When we set, set this to true, we basically apply a light sea green color uh, to the background of this paragraph, as well as this text. We toggle this text. So whenever I hover on it, you can see that's the sea green background as well as the text. Cool. And then what happens when we leave, we basically set that value to false again. And then when it is false, we apply a light uh, slate gray background with a text that's saying not hovering. So that's how this works. This is meant to signify how React handles mouse enter and mouse leave events. Uh, the next example is going to be a little bit uh, more complicated in nature. So let's just dive into it. This is going to be uh, using a lot of stuff that we haven't talked about and that I don't really want to uh, dive too deep into because these tend to be a little bit more advanced concepts. We are in the preliminary phase of our series, uh, but still I'm going to go over them uh, from like a higher level perspective. So what is it that we want to do? First, let's take a look at the app that is going to make understanding the code a little bit easier. So whenever we refresh, this is the app. Now, the aim of this app is to, whenever we click on this focus input, to put the cursor inside the input element. And that's technically called an input element that has a focus state. So when I click on it, you can see the cursor is right inside there. And when the cursor goes inside there, 
I basically apply some specific styles, right? When the input is focused, I apply some specific styles and they come from our CSS. There we go. So when the input is focused, we apply background color and then we change the color of the text to white, right? So here, there we go. I could click there or I could click on this one. So that's the aim of this uh, app. Now let's go over the code. So here what we have is basically two different kinds of ref hooks. One is a use ref, another one is forward ref. The idea behind use ref uh, is that it is going to allow us or give us a way to persist a reference across renders, All right? Now, the difference between input, uh, this use ref and use state is that whenever the data changes, use state is going to re-render our application. And we talked about how that works in our previous lesson, right? The, the virtual DOM and all of that stuff. Now, with use ref, we can persist data without causing a re-render. So in some situations, we would use use ref to basically optimize our app to make it a little bit faster. Now, the forward ref, as opposed to the use ref that we're using right here, this is also a hook provided to us or a utility provided to us by, um, I think this is technically not a hook, this is a utility that is provided to us by React that this basically allows us uh, allows us uh, allows for a component to receive a reference from its parent right now normally reference is used to access dom elements or class components directly so the idea of this entire app is that we have a div element right here that has a custom input and a button now the button is something else whenever we target this custom input we want to control its reference using the parent component. Now here we have this in this form element right here, which is being co controlled using the parent uh, input, uh, the parent input input ref. <laughs> a lot of R's. So what is this custom input? The custom input is basically a form input that has a label, and then the label has an input, right? Now, the way we change, the way we control this is that on the parent element, we say whenever the focus changes, we want, whenever like something happens to the form input, we want to pass the input that the reference that comes from the parent, which initially is no. I mean, that's logical, right? Since we, when we log in, we are going to, uh, when we refresh the page, we are going to keep it as null. And when we click on this, then we are going to focus on that. Now for this specific app, this is the logic and how it's going to work. Now, coming back to our forward ref, you can see the forward ref, it actually accepts a label, an on input change method, and a ref right and this ref is basically the reference that we are going to pass from the parent or the use ref to this forward ref right and whenever the input changes we're gonna basically control that as well we could see that in the browser uh, in the browser console so we are changing that that's not the point the point is basically this ref right i hope i i was able to like basically explain it in simple terms but these are like a little bit more advanced concepts but i still wanted to show you how this works uh, in the context of react if we wanted to have a custom input with event forwarding all right this is just like a very simple example of that and finally uh, in our sixth example we have another cool app which is basically a drag and drop so for this one i need to have some sort of thing that i could drop here let me see uh, from my files mm, i'm going to drop in a font that's easier right so the app is basically revolving around this idea that we're going to grab some file bring it drag it over here and when and then this ui is going to change that's the idea of this entire app so i have this font open sans so this is my font. As soon as I drag it over here, you can see the UI changes. So drag away, drag enter, drag leave. 
enter, leave, enter, leave. Cool. So this is the app. And as soon as I drop it, we're going to see some message in the console that says item dropped. Now let's take a look at the um, code for this one. It's extremely simple. So here we have our react drag event right there. And then we have another drag event right here as well. The use state has an initial value, which is false, which is logical because whenever we load the page, we don't have anything to drag over there. This false is going to be set as the first or initial value for the dragging. Cool. And then we change this dragging using the set dragging. There is a lot of dragging, right? So if we take a look at our diff, we have all of these methods applied here. So we have on drag over, we handle drag over. Now let's take a look, a closer look at these events. I feel like this is extremely simple. Uh, what we have here is basically when the dragging is true, we want to apply a specific color. We want to apply this light sea green, but when the dragging is false, we are going to apply this light coral. And you can see the dragging is false since, uh, since we applied that. And we want to change the text dynamically as well. So when we are dragging, we are going to say release to drop. Otherwise, we are going to say drag an item here. All right, this is it for this video and see you in the next one.